All right, so you've got your line of best fit or your least squares regression line. What do you do with it? What's what, what's the big deal? Well, I, I'm going to use some data that I've been using for in some of the other videos. I've got uh, my uh, in list number one over here. I've got my explanatory variable, which is fat grams. And in list number two, I've got my response variable, which is calories. List number three is actually the residuals, but we're not going to use that in this case. So I've already looked at everything. Remember, you should look at a number of different things to make sure that your um, scatter plot is straight enough. You should, well, I can't spell straight, you should look at the R, your, your correlation coefficient R, and see if it's straight enough. You should look at the scatter plot itself, look at the residual plot and see if it's straight enough. So I've determined that this is straight enough. And now I'm going to use this uh, equation, this line of best fit, to um, uh, make predictions. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, so here we go. Let me rewrite this line of best fit in the notation, in the context of this problem. Um, in this case, y, my response variable, is calories. So I would write calories hat, okay, you always put a hat over your response variable, is equal to my intercept, and my intercept is 294.76 plus my slope, which is 8.83, I'll go to two decimal places there, times my response variable, I'm sorry, my explanatory variable, which is fat grams. So here is my uh, least squared regression line or my line of best fit. That's the equation for it uh, when I write it in the context of this situation. So I can make predictions. That's part of the reason why we find this line of best fit, to make predictions. So over here on my um, scatter plot, if I look at my my uh, scale, I've got zero over here, and this goes all the way up to 43. So somewhere, somewhere over here is like 45. So what if I wanted to know, I wanted to make a prediction, how many calories, okay, let's say how many calories will be in a food that has, I don't know, let's make a prediction of for 20, that has 20 fat grams. So you look here and I've, uh, in my original data and I've got 13 fat grams and I've got an observed value and then it jumps all the way up to 31 and then it goes to 43. I have nothing in the 20, so let's make a prediction here. Well, you just use some algebra, just plug, just plug in the, the appropriate values and we end up getting, um, I'm going to go back to y hat equals 294.76 plus 8.83 times 20 for my 20 fat grams. So I just grab my calculator. I'm going to do a little bit of extra work here. You might be able to hear me hitting the buttons. 294.76 plus 8.83 times 20 ends up giving us 471.36. So this predicted value here gives us a value of, what was it again, 471.36. Now if I want to write this properly, I should type it in or give it some context. So let me go ahead and type in my answer. And I might say something like this, um, a food that has 20, oh yeah, you know, I forgot something. You should always write this. This is, when we create a, um, a line of best fit, we're creating a model, okay? So we should say something about this being a model, okay? It's not perfect. Models aren't perfect, but they give us an idea. So according to the model, a food that has 20 fat grams will have about 
calories. Okay, so you have to tell, when you, when you write your answers like this, you have to tell where this comes from. So according to the model, or I could even put in there according to the linear model, a food that has 20 fat grams will have about 471.36 calories. Now, that's, you know, that's just an example of making, making a prediction, and maybe that point is somewhere in here. Remember, the line of best fit gives you predicted value. Well, what if I wanted to go a little bit further? Okay, this line of best fit continues. It starts here, and it continues and continues and continues to go on forever. That's what a line does. What if I wanted to make a prediction about um, instead of how many calories will be in a food that has 20 fat grams, let's change this and say I want to make a prediction how many calories will be in a food that has uh, maybe uh, 100 fat grams. So what do I do now? Well, we have to be careful. One thing that, that we don't want to do, this is, this is a warning, 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 warning. <clears throat> um, we don't want to make predictions that are outside the scope of the model. So if I wanted to try to make a prediction, I'll use a smiley face here. If I wanted to make a, a, a prediction that was way over here, oops, put too many smiley faces. I wanted to make a prediction that was way over there, uh, right in this area, <coughs> um, using my model, I really shouldn't, okay? Because my data starts at 13 and goes up to 43. If I make a prediction beyond 30, 43 for my fat grams, what I have done is I have, I am trying to make a prediction that is outside the scope of my model. So over here is 200 fat grams, and my data only goes from here, 13, up to 43. So this is a big warning. One thing in statistics that you do not want to do is you do not want to make a prediction that is outside the scope of your model. So if I were to answer this question, the second one, how many calories calories will be in a food that is that has 100 fat grams, I could say something like this. Um, 100 fat grams is outside the scope of my linear model, therefore making a prediction would be dangerous. Or uh, you could say something about being cautious. Now you could go ahead and make that prediction. If I plug 100 into my formula, um, I would end up getting 294.76 plus 8.83 times 100 is 1,000 uh, ends up being 1,177.76. But I don't really want to type this up without making this statement. 100 fat grams is outside the scope of my linear model, therefore making a prediction would be dangerous. After saying this, if I wanted to go on and say, according to the model, a food that has 100 fat grams will have about 1,177.76 calories, I would be okay. But this right here, this, uh, this idea of predicting outside the scope of your model is very dangerous. Um, the reason why it's dangerous is because we don't know what's going to happen outside of this model. Let me, uh, let me grab this and take it to another page, the scatter plot. Here's my scatter plot and there's my line of best fit, but we don't know what's going to happen out in, out in this area over here we could have a situation where our data levels off. Or maybe there's something that happens and our data ends up rising and then it starts to fall, okay? We don't know what's going to happen outside of the data that we actually have, so we should not make predictions beyond the data that we have. And that's called making predictions beyond the scope of your model. So you gotta be careful.